Hello everyone, I am Sahana, a PhD student working with Dr. Vinod Skarya at CSIR Institute of Genomics and Integrative Biology. In this session, I would be giving a brief introduction on pharmacogenomics and its importance in implementing clinical practice. So, in the next 20 to 30 minutes, I would be covering the topics that are mentioned in this slide, which would give you a basic idea of what is pharmacogenomics and ease your understanding to the upcoming sessions in the course. The, the topics include the concept of precision medicine, what is pharmacogenomics, and how pharmacogenomics can affect the pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics of the drugs, and uh, publicly available pharmacogenomic information, and the clinical validity and utility of the available pharmacogenomic information, and also the concept shift of the concept from the uh, precision medicine to the concept of pre precision public health. I would I would like to start my presentation with stating the importance of precision medicine for everyone. Precision medicine is an emerging approach for disease treatment and prevention that would take into account each individual variability in genes, environment and lifestyle. And lifestyle. About 75% of the individuals um, who visit a doctor's office are prescribed with one or other drug therapy. These drugs mainly include either analgesics, lipid lowering drugs or antidepressants. Among these drugs, most of them are associated with a genetic variant that could affect the efficacy of the drug and each individual might have at least one of those variants in their gene. Hence, the prescribed drug might not work or cause some adverse drug reactions. To understand the concept of drug is efficacy, I would like to quote a very well-known proverb here. One size does not fit all. Uh, everyone needs to be prescribed with their personalized dosage for efficacy, uh, for a higher efficacy of the drug. Drug efficacy varies by drug type. Some of the efficacious drugs include analgesics as shown in this figure, which works in about 80% of the patients. Some of the drugs which are used in oncology are very poorly efficacious, which work in less than only 25% of the patients. These major drug classes that are, in, um, are ineffective or less, less efficacious in patients. So, uh, and hence the concept of uh, personalized medicine has occurred. So, the, uh, there are other classes of drugs which are very much ineffective in a lot of patients, which include hypertensive drugs, heart failure drugs, antidepressants, cholesterol drugs, and asthma. In asthma drugs, in these, uh, in this slide, I've also mentioned about how many percentage of the people who take the drug might not uh, work, might not have a good efficacious effect of the drug and sometimes they might uh, develop some adverse drug reactions. And also these drug classes have been studied and proved to have many genetic polymorphism associated with them. Not only are drugs are even less efficacious in everyone, uh, but they are sometimes uh, more harm uh, than good. Adverse drug reactions are uh, Defined as any response to a drug that is noxious and unintended uh, and that occurs at uh, that occurs at doses used in man for prophylaxis, diagnosis or therapy excluding failure to accomplish the intended purpose. Although individually rare, collectively uh, adverse drug reactions are found to be the leading cause of death in hospitalized patients. The good part is that most of the adverse drug reactions can be Pre prevented beforehand if pharmacogenomics action of the drug is predicted properly. These drug reactions occur across many therapeutic classes including some of the most prescribed drugs such as analgesics and antidepressants. To get into an intro, now we are getting into what is pharmacogenomics. Pharmacogenomics is a study of genetic basis of individual variability in drug responses. This is studied by correlating the genetic expression or SNPs with drug efficacy or toxicity. This study helps in understanding the inter-individual variability in drug response and to optimize the selection and dosage of therapeutics. To explain in simple terms, here is an image 
in which a drug X is given to four different patients. So based on the genetic variation that each of the patient has, the drug X might respond, drug X might work very well in the person, in the first person, and he might uh, respond in the normal dosage. Whereas in the second person, he might develop adverse drug reaction when there is uh, a normal dosage is given and hence lower dosage is required. On, in case of third patient, there are, uh, he might not work, um, the drug might not work in um, the normal dosage and he might require a higher dosage. And in case of fourth patient, the drug might not work itself and he might need a, uh, need an alternative drug. So in simple terms, uh, PGX is the approach of right drug at the right dose for the right patient. To prove this statement, sorry, to prove this statement that has been mentioned in the previous slide, I am I have given a review that is um, that has uh, showed the importance of pharmacogenomic study. So, a review conducted on hospitalized patients in US has proved that most of the inefficacy or adverse drug reactions of the drugs lead to misdosing, drug-drug interactions, and drug allergies and medication error, and are uh, and also, individual genetic predisposition is an undeniable reason. A study conducted by Klassen and Group uh, has identified in two, 2,227 instances of adverse drug reactions among the hospitalized patients and proved that 42% of them are due to misdosing and 50% has no preventable cause and are likely to be genetic factors. As you have seen in the last lecture, there are many types of genetic variation that have been reported. Among these, there are four types of genetic variations are found to be associated with one or the other drug, which includes single nucleotide variations, short insertions and deletions, haplotypes and HLA alleles. So, to uh, explain what is single nucleotide variation. Single nucleotide variations are the most common genetic polymorphism among, among people and it represents a change or difference in one nucleotide. The insertion or deletion is a polymorphism commonly abbreviated as indel. In this type, a variant is a variant uh, specific, a variant uh, in this type of variant, a specific nucleotide sequence is either inserted or deleted in the genome. Haplotypes are the third group of genomic variations that are found to be associated with genetic uh, associated with the uh, number of drugs and are um, and are found to be more important type of genetic variation when it comes to pharmacogenomic studies. Haplotypes are group uh, haplotypes typically reflect a unique combination of variants that resides near each other on a chromosome. The fourth and final type of genetic variation that is found to be associated with a drugs are HLA alleles. Human leukocyte antigens are gene in major histocompatibility complexes that help code for protein that differentiate between self and non-self. HLA alleles are the variations in these genes. Like genetic variations can affect the drug efficacy and safety, it can also impact the pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics of the drug. Pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics are two broad divisions within clinical pharmacology. Biochemical interactions of the drugs are generally measured and described by pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics. Pharmacokinetics is simply defined as how a human body interacts with the drug or how the drug concentration changes as it moves through the body, while pharmacodynamics is the body's response to the drugs. So, to get, uh, the process of pharmacokinetics include absorption, distribution, metabolism and excretion of the drug. Absorption describes the ability of the compound to get into the body. Drugs are absorbed through various routes such as orally, intravenously and inhalation. These comp then, once the drugs are uh, absorbed, these compounds has to be distributed around the body through the circulatory, uh, uh, around the body and that this is uh, done by the circulatory system and this helps to reach the relevant tissues. This process is aided by protein transporters such as SLCO1B1. 
The drugs are metabolized primarily in the liver. Metabolism is a way to biotransform a drug. Sometimes biotransformation takes a drug and converts it into a pharmacologically active compound. Sometimes biotransformation is needed to take an active compound to make it inactive. Metabolism is facilitated by enzymes. Mo enzymes, the most important class being CYP450 enzymes. Uh, finally, the drug and its byproducts need to be eliminated from the body once it has uh, it has given its efficacy to the body. So this happens through the excretion routes such as urine, feces, breath, breath, and other routes. So nearly there are 340 genes involved in the process of ad, uh, absorption, distribution, metabolism and excretion and are defined as ADME genes. Out of these, 32 are co-genes and these fall under a category of phase 1, phase 2 and mainly uh, and, and some transporter genes. Phase 1 category mainly includes SIP genes and phase 2 category includes glutathione and, and other enzymes. So here in case of ADME, phase 1 genes are the most important uh, class of genes uh, and are found to be have, found to have a n number of genetic variants, variations which is associated with the uh, uh, one or the other drug classes. As I said earlier, the most important class of enzymes involved in drug metabolism are cytochrome P450 enzymes, that is CYP enzymes. Um, and uh, the, there are more than 50 CYP enzymes present in human body, but are majorly involved in, um, but are only five are majorly involved in over 90% of the small molecular drug metabolism. There, uh, three of these show a marked in the individual variability um, in in a lot of individuals, um, which includes CYP2D6, CYP2C9, and CYP2C90. It is well recognized that these variants are there in person to person, and uh, the changes caused by these variations in the uh, enzymes are categorized into four clinical phenotypes. In most cases, there are extensive or normal metabolizers where the enzymes work normally. In some people, it is highly active than the average person and is called ultra-rapid metabolizers. Conversely, some people have P450 enzymes that are less active called intermediate metabolizers or poor metabolizers. In most cases, the drugs are developed considering the population is normally metabolized, normal metabolizers. In case of intermediate metabolizer, poor metabolizer and ultra rapid metabolizers, the people might respond differently. Clinical phenotypes assigned based on the combination of haplotypes in two copies of the gene in an individual. In terms of the frequency, extensive and intermediate metabolizers are very common while poor and ultra rapid metabolizers are low in numbers. Here are a few examples that have been quoted. I have quoted uh, to depict the consequences of variations in pharmacokinetics. Warfarin is an anticoagulant normally used in the prevention of thrombosis. Warfarin works by inhibiting VKORC1 enzymes, which leads to reduced clotting. To be eliminated from the body, warfarin needs to be inactivated. This is accomplished by CYP2C9. In a CYP2C9 poor metabolizers, there will be reduced elimination which would lead to increased toxicity and while in case of ultra-rapid metabolizers of CYP2, ultra-rapid metabolizers of CYP2C9, uh, there will be increased elimination which would lead to reduced efficacy. The second example given here is codeine. Codeine is an opioid medication used to treat pain. Codeine is converted to its active metabolite morphine by CYP2D6 enzyme. CYP2D6 poor metabolizers would have increased, uh, would have decreased activation, leading to reduced efficacy, whereas ultra rapid metabolizer for CYP2D6 would have increased activation, leading to increased toxicity.
pharmacodynamics uh, or uh, how a drug exerts its effects in the body can influence can also influence uh, drug response a very simple view of how a drug does this is recognized by uh, is by recognizing and binding to a protein target and controlling the activity of the target the activity could be agonized where the drug activates the target or antagonized where the drug depresses the activity of the target this would induce a change in how the target molecule functions in regard to intermolecular interaction pharmacodynamic actions include simulating activity depressing activity antagonistic stabilizing action and direct chemical reactions so here is an example to depict the consequences of the variation in pharmacodynamics gefitinib is used to treat certain types of cancer gefitinib is a class of medication called kinase inhibitor it works by blocking the action of egfr that is needed for cancer cell multiplication another example that defines the pharmacodynamic consequences are targeted therapies which includes the class of medications called monoclonal antibodies uh, which is used in treating a number of cancers and this falls under the class of personalized medicine trastuzumab is a targeted medication for breast cancer patients with a h2 uh, h her2 biomarker cetuximab is another monoclonal antibody used to treat colorectal cancer patients who have egfr or cras biomarkers so uh, here is a slide to understand the history and the growth of pharmacogenomics the history of pharmacogenomics dates back as early as uh, 510 bc when the Pythag when pythagoras noted that only some people ingested with fava beans fell sick because they suffered from potentially fatal hemolytic anemia due to deficiency in g6pd later in 1902 sir archibald gerard for the first time proposed the concept of chemical individuality anticipating the role of genetics in explaining the metabolic variation between humans in 1959 the term pharmacogenetics was coined by friedrich vogel the invention of pcr technology in 1980 triggered the surge uh, triggered the surge in candidate gene based pgx studies elucidating the importance of pharmacogenes this led to the uh, fabulous discovery of tpmt polymorphism in drug efficacy and toxicity the importance of sip genes in uh, pharmacogenomics were very well studied in 1986 and the completion of human genome sequence in 2003 made a remarkable growth in the field of pharmacogenomics and now uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, and now there are a lot of uh, variants that have been associated with one or the other drug drug classes have been reported and this uh, informations are being printed in the drug labels as well and there are a lot of groups such as cpic fda that takes care of this information being right and reaches the uh, reaches people in the right way so also emergence of ngs technology and the reduction of cost in the ngs technology has given another way or uh, another different way of uh, development in the field of pharmacogenomics as he said in the previous slide the united states food and drug administration has included pharmacogenomic markers in the product labels for around 319 drugs to date Uh, nearly 34% of the new drugs that for which the pharmacogenomic information is being added on the product labels are personalized drug one great example for that is monoclonal antibodies which we saw in the uh, uh, previous uh, examples monoclonal antibodies are generally targeted therapies uh, these are provided for patients only when they have a specific genetic variants which would uh, pave the way for the monoclonal antibodies uh, to uh, work effectively so in these cases these informations are uh, being provided in the fda uh, fda drug labels 
so uh, the drug labels would have warnings of these pharmacogenomic information in the column called warnings or in the column called black box warnings so the information that is given by the fda on the product label cannot be completely elaborative so fda has to communicate the important information without be being too prescriptive so when there is very less information that can be given on the uh, uh, box of the drugs more information can be found on the other uh, databases so one such database is farm gkb which is uh, abbreviated as pharmacogenomics knowledge base farm gkb is an nih funded resource that provides information about how human genetic variation affects response to the medications generally farm gkb collects curates and disseminates knowledge about the clinically actionable gene drug associations and also the genotype and phenotype relationship Farm GKB also evaluates evidence of gene drug association and interprets the FDA label and other uh, all the other guideline resources available. And this database is considered as one of the uh, most important uh, information source when it comes to pharmacogenomics. And uh, any any uh, research on pharmacogenomics can can at today can never be done without uh, heading back to farm gkb and checking the information over there so there is another consortium called clinical pharmacogenomics implementation consortium in uh, in which uh, the guidelines mainly focuses on how to use the available genetic tests and optimize the drug therapy so in this case this consortium has still now published dosing guidelines for 82 drugs and 23 genes based on the curated evidence it also evaluates evidence that supports the prescribing changes so that the information on the cp can be uh, considered as a very uh, a, um, a trustful source and can be used till the prescribing changes so it also publishes usage guidelines for each of the drugs that have been uh, considered to have a genetic variation associated with it so uh, to uh, the next uh, concept here that we are going to see is precision public health now we know that uh, precision medicine is a right drug at the right dosage to the right person but in case of precision uh, medicine it is really hard for each individual to know their genetic information so this there comes the concept called precision public health where a right drug or the right dose is given on the right population because pharmacogenomics related to thera therapeutic responses vary significantly across populations and you, population scale large scale genome sequencing projects have uncovered a significant differences in the population wise distribution as you can see in the uh, image given on the right till date we are providing a uh, same diagnosis and same same prescription to a uh, to the entire patient group but there are uh, subgroups in the patient groups where a drug is toxic but beneficial for a group and drug is toxic but not beneficial for another group and drug might not be toxic and not beneficial for another group and drug is not toxic and sometimes beneficial for other group so we have to find this group of people for whom the drug is not toxic and also beneficial so in that case it is better to understand the population level genomic information and provide a uh, population level benefits to the people when it comes to pharmacogenomic uh, uh, pharmacogenomic informations so this uh, the completion of human genome project has advanced in, has given an advancement in the field of sequencing and genome analysis which has declined the cost of uh, sequencing and has uh, developed paved the way for development in the uh, global population scale genome and exome sequencing initiatives so this uh, development in the global population scale genome and exome sequencing initiative have uh, have given an enormous growth in the understanding of the span of human genetic variation and tracing the human origins migrations and adaptations of predicting disease risks diagnosis and prognosis which paved a way for a new epoch for precision medicine 
So, as I said uh, in the last slide, there are n number of global population sequencing efforts that has resulted a new insight into differential dif uh, disease burden and has given a response and has uh, found a way to find the response to therapy within and between the populations. Here are a few examples of such uh, population scale uh, genome, uh, genome projects. Uh, these are the genome projects which have been initially done. And uh, the first one is International HapMap project in which 1,397 uh, individuals have been sequenced from 11 different populations. And Human Genome Diversity Project is the widely known uh, uh, project in which 938 genomes have been sequenced from nearly 51 different populations. And Hugo Panashin SNP Consortium has 1,719 individuals, uh, including uh, 71 po different populations. Thousand Genome Project is one of the uh, important uh, important project in understanding the pharmacogenomic information in which the two th in which two thousand five hundred and four uh, genomes have been sequenced till date, which includes twenty six different populations. Not only these, then after uh, development of these uh, uh, global population sequencing efforts, there are uh, national level uh, sequencing efforts that have been that are being uh, done. And uh, one such example is Indigene from India, uh, in which thousand thousand twenty nine individuals have been sequenced from the different ethnic groups in India. It covers all over all uh, places in India and all the ethnic groups. In the same way, there are Singapore projects, uh, Malaysian project, Qatar project and everything, which you will be seeing in the upcoming slides, upcoming sessions. So to summarize what we have seen in this uh, session, genetic variations contributes to inter-individual differences in drug response phenotype at every pharmacological step. And this can impact the pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics of the drugs. Dozens of drugs with information in FDA label is uh, there uh, and not being prescribed based on that. CP guidelines are authoritative source of information on clinical validity or utility of specific pharmacogenomic information. As I said, PharmGKB is a knowledge hub for reliable pharmacogenomic information as well. So, uh, some drugs require testing for efficacy, whereas other require for serious adverse drug reaction that are strongly recommended. Both are going to give higher benefits to the patients who are consuming the drugs. Pharmacogenomic uh, studies would lead to better and safer drugs. More accurate methods of determining ap appropriate drug dosage are needed to be uh, developed uh, based on all the pharmacogenomics research. Pharmacogenomics offers unprecedented opportunities to understand the genetic architecture of drug response. And also, uh, pharmacogenomics is not only factor that impacts prescribing. So, and hence the other factors are also need to be checked. Thank you for listening. Hope it's, uh, it was very useful and